Lord, I thank you for another day. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for strengthening our minds and strengthening our bodies. Thank you, Lord God, that you speak clear and we hear you. I thank you, Lord God, that when the enemy comes to distract us, we will not follow because we recognize his voice. Open our eyes, Lord Jesus. Make us more aware spiritually, God. Give us discernment, God, so we can see and recognize the plots and the plans of the enemy. I thank you, God, that you have a plan for us, God, and we want to follow yours, God. We'll seek you first. We'll trust in you. We'll rest in you. We know that you will give us to victory. We know you, God, that you will guide us and guard us, protect us and keep us from all hurt, harm and danger. I thank you that today our children are safe, our parents are safe, our loved ones, God. We don't have to stress about our jobs. We'll keep employment because you'll supply our needs according to your riches and glory. Help us to step out on faith, God. Stretch us today, God. And we know, God, that when you stretch us, we won't break. We will not break. We will not break. You will keep us together. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank God. Amen. Uh, today I want to talk about uh, the danger of not knowing. Knowing. Um, unfortunately, many people, that is their excuse. I didn't know. And the Bible clearly says, my people perish for the lack of knowledge. Uh, Job, there's another scripture in Job 36 that says, but if they do not obey, they shall perish by the sword and they shall die without knowledge. It is our job to make sure that we are aware of what's happening in our own lives. Um, whether it is a relationship or your children or your church, it is your job to not be so focused on working and trying to get to tomorrow till today gets lost. So someone needs your help. Someone needs your hope. Someone needs your prayer. Somebody needs to lean on you and you're not available because you're just not paying attention. You're not active in your own life. You're not talking to your kids to find out if they're okay. You're not double checking what's happening at your church to make sure that you're not a part of some cult or scam. Unfortunately, many people leave churches because they just didn't know what they said, what they heard felt really good and made them happy and made them feel good. And so that's where they stayed. I didn't know I was there for so many years and I just didn't know. Once you leave service, you should be talking to God. Now, Lord, make that come alive. If that information comes alive, the Lord will show you or the Holy Spirit will tell you that I ain't say, I ain't never said that. You just heard a whole message. Y'all danced and shouted for an hour and I ain't, I wasn't there at all. I left y'all service hours ago. And you can be upset at the pastors for being crooks and you can be upset at the people who are not paying attention in your lives. But what about you? Can't you pay attention? When you're getting little inklings of people or little feelings about people doing stuff that's crooked and shady and not right. Be smart. Start doing your research. And I'm not talking about in the message. Hey, have you heard anything? Get on your knees and pray and seek God so he can reveal to you what's happening in and around your life. You don't want to be a part of a scam. You didn't know because you had some other motivating feeling. I, re I really want to be this. And since I really want to be that, I'll ignore this negative stuff. I want this so bad. I'll take anything and I'll ignore all these signs that I see. That this is the wrong choice, the wrong thing, the wrong place. My people perish for the lack of knowledge. But the Bible also tells us if we seek, we'll find. No good thing will he withhold from you. You know, he who seeks finds, you know, when you seek me with your whole heart. That's what the word says. So start opening up your eyes in your life, especially if it's a bunch of stuff you don't understand. I, I just, I didn't even know that is not going to be. Uh, uh, an acceptable excuse. I hate when my kids say that. I didn't even know. Well, how were you supposed to find out that's your job? This is your life. You can't leave it in the hands of other people. Well, you know, I'm just waiting on them to tell me. Waiting on who? For what? You better find out what's going on in your life. All right? That is my faith walk for the day, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for the Ericaism of the day. So Stellar Awards is coming. Some other things are coming. So I'm, you know, exercising and I'm, I'm working out and I'm drinking water and I have Krista joining me, right? And so, um, it, okay, I'm just going to say it. I don't enjoy working out, but I know it's good for me. I know that while I'm doing it, I need to get my mind and my spirit right. So I need to tell myself, this is good for you, Erica. You need to do this. This is going to reap benefits. It's going to last longer than uh, just what you'll look like at an event. It's going to keep you healthy. It's going to keep you energized. And you'll have the energy that you need to perform on stage and travel and do all these things that God has you. So you have to talk yourself up sometimes. So I'm trying to do that with Krista who's working out and she's just not happy. She don't want to work out. She don't want to do nothing. She don't want to do the squats. She don't want to do sit-ups. She don't want to do no lunges, no jumps. She don't want to do any of it. 
And so by the time we get to the end, I notice her mood doesn't change. And so I'm trying to cheerlead her on and I'm pumping her up. And you can do it, Chris. This is so good. And she gets emotional at the end. And she gets emotional just at her, as her father's coming in the door. And we stood her up and we told her that we loved her. And we told her that it was okay to be sad and upset, but she had to keep going anyway. We told her that just because she shed a few tears, she didn't get to stop. Because what she was doing was going to make her better. And even if she didn't want to do it, she still had to. I said, because I'm a terrible mama if five years down the line, you 300 pounds heavier because I didn't make you do this. I have to make you do this because I want you to be better. And I want you to do better. And so I realized that I have to be a better example. So I can't come in grumbling and uh, being grumpy like, oh, God, we got to work in. I have, a good, have to good, ha I have to have a good spirit so she can see me and reflect that. What are your actions reflecting? What are you showing to the young ones in your life? Even if it's not your children, your nieces, your nephews, are you being consistent? Are you being diligent? Are you pressing past the hard stuff? Are you letting them see you even when you cry, even when you get mad, even when you get frustrated? And I told her, I said, getting mad is not a bad thing when it comes to working out. You gotta be so mad and not being the size that you wanna be. You have to be so upset with yourself for eating things that you know will not benefit your body. You gotta get mad at it. You know what, doggone it, I'm not doing this no more. And as you do that, you keep going. Will it be easy? No, but it'll get easier because you have to speak life even in those things. When I say speak life, I'm not just talking about Jesus stuff. I'm talking about everything. I can do this. I can pass this test. I can lose this weight. I can buy this house. I can start this business. I can clean my closet. You know what I mean? I can just small. You have to make sure that you press past the tears, press past the anger, press past the frustration, press, press past the desire to go, you know what? Just forget it. I am who I am. No, be your best. That takes work and that takes diligence. So do it. You can do it. All right. Be encouraged. Stay focused, stay motivated, press past the pain, and get to greatness, all right? That is my Erica-ism for today. Love you and I mean it. Griffith was so hard, man, because when you see your child crying, you immediately want to go, oh, that's okay, but it's not okay. It's not okay. You got you to gotta do it anyway. It's not going to feel comfortable, and you can give yourself all the excuses. I'm so hungry. My knees hurt. Keep going until you get the healthy body that you deserve. All right, let's get up mornings. Let me give them this love talk real quick. So our poll question today was, you know, the best place to meet somebody. Of course, you get all the usual things. You can meet in a grocery store. You can meet in, uh, what did they say, Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, somebody even said that you can meet in a Dollar Tree. And then of course, somebody said church. Let me tell you something if you meet somebody at church. You better do the same investigation that you would do if you met somebody at a basketball game. I don't care if it's the worship leader or the youth pastor. If you meet somebody in church, you better check them out, the guys and the girls. There are people who love Jesus, but they just ain't got their heart right all the way. They ain't got their spirit right. They ain't got their flesh under control. So they may serve the Lord, but they serve themselves Monday through Friday. And you got to find out. I mean, maybe they come dress nice and they speak well and they travel. So what? But he's a gospel singer. So what? But she's a minister. So what? Do your research. Find out who they really are. I think too many people have gotten their heart broken because they assume that I met you in church. It's all good. I mean, check them all out. Deacons, drummers, pastors, youth leaders, the people that cook the food. Check them all out. You hear me? Don't you play no games with yourself assuming because they say, Lord, Lord. The Bible even says everybody that says, Lord, Lord, won't enter in just because they in church does not mean they have it all together. Do not be fooled, people. And I was raised in church. That's how I know. Trust me. Do the same research. Check them out. Ask the same questions. You know, give them your good side eye. Make sure they get around your people so you can have some other people with that good discernment. They can tell you, uh-uh, baby, her spirit is off. She don't have no good intentions. You better check these people out or you'll end up with a broken heart. All right? That's my love talk. Just a little practical information for you today.